So where are you in Goldman's, inside Goldman Sachs in this process, right, of, of incorporating some of these new technologies? And what is your process? I know you have a big engineering staff. Yeah. We definitely have uh, uh, a pretty sizable engineering staff, uh, and uh, um, you know, we're really looking forward uh, to uh, technologists really to be in the driver's seat to you know, kind of lead this uh, uh, revolution of AI. In terms of where we are, right now we are uh, conducting a number of you know, what we call proof of concepts, and in some cases those are actually starting to be expanded and extended to quite a bit of people within, uh, within the firm. The first one being the developer productivity, as I mentioned. But we're also working, for example, on uh, um, the summarization of large uh, quantities of data into the hands of the people that consume that data every day. So we've enabled, uh, let's say, natural language uh, queries interfaces where we can ask, people can ask really complex uh, uh, questions, such as, uh, you know, uh, given the earnings of, that, of this company, give me all the companies that might be impacted by this particular, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, things that was reported, or for example, by a hypothesis that uh, uh, exchange rates might go in a certain direction. So you kind of state your hypothesis, and then the AI will bring information to you that really connect the dots and really summarizes it in something actionable. I think this is really the power of AI, which is uh, it has uh, an uncanny ability to fill the blanks, for example, when if you have incomplete information, it can really effectively fill the blanks uh, and actually give you a sort of a good trajectory. It's like the next level of uh, sort of interpolation. And then uh, the second part is uh, really connecting the dots. You can ask very complex questions that span multiple elements, multiple factors. It could be macro factors, micro factor, your own research, your own data. And this comes into a hypothesis, comes into something that uh, really connects those dots uh, in a way that is almost like it's very human, but in a way it's superhuman because it processes this incredible amounts of information. And, uh, and then, you know, the summarization, it can give you, like imagine, for example, a banker wakes up gets an email that says from an AI and says, this just happened in the world. This might impact the following clients. These are the three talking points that you should tell them. Mm. And it's a very pointed, very... Um, and how far away are we from that? I think we're actually not that far away from that. Mm. And right now the challenge is really, and for us it's been a big focus, is how to make it safe in the sense uh, that, uh, you know, the information is actually correct and accurate because AIs uh, started as a very plausible engine, ans answer engine. It gives you things that sounds really, really good, but then sometimes uh, uh, you know, they turn out to be incorrect. And so we've done a lot of work uh, to really make sure that uh, you merge the ability to kind of produce content with the ability to actually retrieve content and then cross-check it and make sure that it's correct. And so that is you know, a very important part. And I think, uh, uh, you know, the state of the art is moving really, really fast, and so I think we're getting, you know, very close to have uh, something that, you know, is, is nothing short than a revolution. Marco, um, you sound like a tech guy, not a finance guy, because you are a tech guy, I am. right? You came from Amazon Web Services before, and making that transition from native tech to finance, um, talk to me about the difference between them and how good does big finance need to be at tech, and how does the firm think about it versus an actual tech firm? Well, see, um, when I was at Amazon, I was working uh, on digital transformation on some of the large uh, uh, industrial companies in the world, and especially I worked a lot with automotive manufacturers. And that made me realize that uh, software is actually becoming the key component of every industry. Think about the evolution of a car that goes from being uh, you know, a mechanical thing to almost being like right now a data center on wheels. And that is really happening in every, in, in, every, in every segment. And so I think the big difference today is the fact that uh, technology is no longer the back office IT organization. Technology is actually the driver of a lot of competitive advantage and actually is the driver of the strategic agenda of the firm in many cases. And so I think the evolution here has been uh, technologists have, technologists have uh, a seat at the table when it comes to strategic directions. And one of the cultural changes that we've been trying to uh, uh, apply at Goldman is the idea of for developers, which is you know, theoretically a little bit unnatural, to go from focusing on the how to actually focusing on the why. 
we call it working backwards from the customer, really understanding that the uh, really understanding what problems you're trying to solve, really understanding who is your customer, and then from that being able to articulate it together with the business uh, uh, owners and then turn it into a solution. And that reversal of priority from how first to why first, I think is something that really characterizes the new role of the engineer. Engineers' uh, roles have changed, and today is kind of a mix between data science, traditional development, and business that come together in this powerful combination that I think really drives uh, you know, the strategic agenda of any firm.